like I said earlier, we respond to people's problems. But the future is going to be a, a lot more than that. Because the environment that a human being is shapes the person. If we don't get the architecture right, people are not going to behave themselves. If the school isn't designed properly, you're not going to get good graduates out of the school of any level. If the roads are not landscaped properly, people are not going to behave themselves on the roads. It's just the way things are. People tend to want to preserve what they see is done with some thought to it. I was talking about some lawmakers that are associated with criminals. They would have brought this upon themselves because if they had made their constituencies bastions of excellence in the built environment, not in the way they understand, but in the way we architects understand, we will choreograph behavior. And that is the future of architecture here. It means that if you want seriously good healthcare services, you got to put doctors in an environment where they can think. And you got to put the patients in an environment where wellness takes priority over general health. So you, you, you keep working on your wellness so you don't get sick in the first place. And if you have to go to a doctor, the environment the doctor is in makes him be able to think properly to treat you. I can go on about this, but I think I've made my point. That's thinking about architecture and environment cascades, it gets bigger, it starts to look at parks, it starts to look at engineering centers. If you have appropriate engineering centers, you'll be able to get people to think, to solve electricity problems, solve road problems, solve transportation problems. If you don't put people in the right environments, they're not going to behave properly. The school, look, you can have a school under a tree, yeah? You can do that. But don't be surprised if you have a few students with monkey behavior. That's the future, because right now, I, I, like I said earlier, I want to reiterate this. Right now, we're only responding to people's briefs. But we have to get to a stage in the future where we are prescribing future policy. In Nigeria, we have some seriously talented architects. As good as, look, the, the, the world's like most famous architect right now is the Ghanaian guy. We have Nigerians that even went to school with him, even better than him, but the media haven't carried them. So the future is to allow these architects to give us the society we need. It's their job, just like it's a doctor's job to tell you what you have wrong with you and to fix it. Architect's job is to improve society, not the politicians. They have to go. If, if somebody is elected president, you're giving him the authority to now choose the right people to get things going. He can't do it. He has to call the architect. If the vice president is an architect, like we had before, he's not the guy to call. Let him call some other architect because is in a political capacity, is going to be encumbered by that political uh, capacity. If he calls an architect, even if the architect is going to charge money, look, as we know, money loses value very quickly, but real estate doesn't. We know that, we know that. So, you know, get an architect. That's the future of architecture here. It is a, Prescriptive architecture is not a reactive architecture.